This video is going to review some of the terms for the scientific inquiry tests um, that weren't in the other videos online. So starting with the idea of observation versus inferences. Observations are facts that you can observe um, with your senses. So you can see, touch, taste, smell. Um, that's what an observation is. So for example, she was not in class today is an observation because we can observe her absence. In contrast to that, the, the, the kind of contrasting term is inference. And an inference is a conclusion um, about something based on an observation. So we can take the first example. She's not in class today and conclude uh, maybe she's not in class today because she's sick. That's an inference. It's a conclusion. Not all of our inferences are correct. She actually might be out of class today because she overslept. Or she might be out of class today because she went out to lunch with a friend. Um, but inferences are attempts to make conclusions, conclusions about uh, data that we have under observations. Um, in science class, we usually take two forms of data. Um, and they're quantitative or qualitative data. And so quantitative data <laughs> I'm saying that backwards. Qualitative data, wrong order. Qualitative data is data that you observe but you don't measure. For example, the color of something, um, the size, you say it's big or small. Um, if you say it's hot or cold without actually measuring it, you're, you're taking a qualitative temperature measurement, hot, cold, medium. Whereas on the other hand, quantitative data, um, and it actually has basically the word quantity in it, which means numbers. It's data that you measure. Um, so if you measure the amount of grams or something, the temperature of something in degrees Celsius, uh, how many millimeters something is, that's quantitative because these measurements are in a quantity. All right. So then moving on to hypothesis theory and law, the last bit of information for this unit. Um, hypothesis, most students know, uh, I define it as a guess about the answer to a scientific problem. Um, often it's called an educated guess because step two of the scientific method is where you learn about your problem and so you become educated on that topic. Uh, for example, you know, if you have a wilted plant, um, you might hypothesize that it needs water in order to grow well. Um, the way we write hypotheses in science are generally if then because statements. Um, so uh, if I was to make a hypothesis about a wilted plant needing water, it might sound like this. If, plant, uh, if water is given to the plant, then it will grow and be healthy because one of the requirements for the life of a plant is water. So if then because statements make up our guesses about the answer to the problem. Now if I actually did this um, and the plant still wilted and died, uh, my hypothesis would not be supported by the data and I'd have to come up with another one. A second hypothesis, maybe it would be that it's not getting enough sunlight. Um, and so if the plant is exposed to more sunlight, then it will grow better because plants need uh, sunlight to do photosynthesis. So that's the idea. In science, hypotheses that have been uh, tested and are generally cover a broad range of information can kind of graduate sometimes into what we call a theory. Um, theories are kind of complex, lots of information about what it is. A theory, as it says here, is a well-tested scientific explanation based on many facts. So saying, you know, you have a theory that your cell phone you left in your locker is not a theory. Um, it's not a well-tested scientific explanation based on facts that you've accumulated. Um, theories often connect a lot of different facts together. For example, an evolutionary theory, which is a theory that organisms change over time, we can look at DNA and see relatedness between organisms. We can look at fossils and see um, changes of them over time. We can look at where life is placed on the planet. And all these little facts help us understand uh, the theory of evolution, um, that things have changed over time. And you know some other theories. We have cell theory. That's the theory that living things are made out of, out of small units called cells. Uh, we have atomic atomic theory, gravitational theory, and it goes on. There's a lot of different theories out there in science. Um, the key for the theory is it's supported by all the evidence discovered. So we have all, evi all the evidence we've ever looked at under the question of evolution shows that, yeah, things are related. All the evidence we've had to see if things are made out of 
um, little units called cells. Every time we study that, we find they're made out of cells. Theories are accepted as fact, um, but we don't call them fact because we know that theories can find new evidence and that might change or add to our understanding a little bit. So it's kind of a, a modesty almost in science to not just be straight out calling it a fact. Um, but you can't discount, you can't think of the word theory as when we're not sure. Um, sometimes people say, oh, well, that's just a theory, right? Um, but they're using the word theory as more of the word hypothesis. In science, if a science says this is a scientific theory, that means it's well tested, connects many facts together, and supports all the evidence. It's not thought by science as probably wrong. So saying just a theory is how we use it in kind of uh, regular conversation, but that's not how science has used the theory. Finally, a law, um, which we won't see much this year, but is a detailed description um, of something about the universe that uses math to kind of calculate or as part of that explanation. So for example, Newton's law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration, explains the amount of uh, force you have to add to something in order to get it to move. Or the law of gravity allows us to calculate um, the speed of an object moving towards the center of the Earth. And that's it.